got my PhD at UConn Health. Uh, there I discovered uh, certain microRNAs that can regulate estrogen receptor alpha, which is uh, critically important in breast cancer. I then did my postdoctoral work at Yale University in the labs of Dr. June Liu and Frank Slack. Uh, and there we made some really important discoveries as well. As uh, I start my own lab, I'm very interested in um, understanding microRNAs and how they can be biomarkers for certain diseases, particularly breast cancer, um, and getting very excited about this uh, concept of exosome biology and how exosome-associated microRNAs could be a better di diagnostic tool for, uh, for breast cancer. It's interesting that um, it's just now be, being considered a breakthrough technology. Uh, liquid biopsy, I think, has been around for some time, but I, I do think that uh, the reemergence of this uh, exosome field has sort of pushed forward the liquid biopsy uh, uh, space. Um, uh, so I can remember back in the early 2000s, people were profiling for, for microRNAs, um, but now the concept is that uh, with exosomes, microRNAs can almost be a hormone and uh, could maybe be better biomarkers of certain disease states. So from a basic science perspective, I think that's the, why there's a resurgence of uh, uh, liquid biopsy. From a clinical standpoint, um, it's, it's kind of to affect the whole healthcare system. Uh, I think it's uh, very impactful to have a non-invasive uh, low-cost methodology for acquiring better biomarkers for some certain diseases. Uh, and uh, something like liquid biopsy is great, minimally invasive, um, and uh, because it's a renewable source, uh, we can actually acquire more samples from a certain patient population and get a better understanding of certain disease states or even a response to a particular drug. So I think this is why uh, liquid biopsy has become a hot topic now in 2015. MicroRNAs um, in general have been linked with many disease states including cancer and microRNAs are, are basically small non-coding RNA that could bind to the 3' UTR of target mRNAs and regulate gene expression in that manner. And so there's been a lot of interest in sort of understanding which microRNAs are apparently expressed in normal versus disease states. Getting nucleic acid out is a, a, a very important point. And so some of the technical limitations has to do with the technologies that we're actually now using to capture exosome. Um, so the gold standard has been uh, to ultra centrifuge, which can be very laborious and, and time consuming. Um, and there's also immunopurification uh, that kind of requires some a priori knowledge of which exosome populations you're after. And so um, there are commercially available kits such as the ones Kyogen is developing uh, that can kind of get around these issues uh, and capture intact exosomes for uh, subsequent diagnostic tests. I think the the other challenge is sort of at the end when you get your RNA from the exosome preps, um, when you do your profiling experiments, what do you normalize to? Um, and a lot of that has to do with the imperfect nomenclature that we're working with. I think as we profile more and more the microRNA exosomes, uh, I think we'll get a better understanding of how to correct for those issues. The exome field is pretty much an open door right now. I think uh, any discovery is going to be exciting. Uh, just the concept that exosomes themselves can transfer genetic material from one cell type to another and the fact that they carry with them microRNAs means that almost now microRNAs can be thought of as a hormone and maybe there are ways that we could capture those uh, exosome populations and intervene therapeutically. So I think um, there's an amazing uh, hope for this field and uh, I think there'll be a lot of discoveries to come.